Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yanep General bringing you another Total War Warhammer 3 Legendary Lord Lore video. And today we are looking at Scrag the Slaughterer, the new Legendary Lord for the Ogres, who will be the pre order DLC for Total War Warhammer 3. But to understand Scrag, we have to understand a little about Ogre religion. So let me take you back in time a little in the Total War Warhammer timeline to the year negative 2750, so some 5250 years before the start of the Total War Warhammer timeline. During this time, the Ogres are really a people who live on grass plains, very much like the Mongolian steppes of our world. They are on the edge of the lands of the very old empire of Cathay, and they are kind of pushing in. They're getting a bit aggro, their numbers have grown a bit too much, they're wanting a bit of that gold, a bit of their food, and they'll munch on the odd citizen from time to time. But the Dragon Emperor of Cafe is getting a bit sick of the Ogres encouraging on his land at this point. And it's around this time that tensions are reaching their peak between these two people. That out of the night sky, a star starts to glow brighter and brighter. Starts to take on a greenish hue. And night by night, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Until it comes slamming down dead in the center of the entire ogre's territory. In an instant, the majority of the ogre population is completely wiped out, the grass plains of their homeland are destroyed and turned into a sandy desert. They are just almost completely annihilated in one night. As a result, most of the ogres who are left Go through this horrible time of, you know, just striving to survive. Cannibalism is rife. And this kicks off a huge migration of the few survivors that are left westward to try and find somewhere they can actually live off the land and not just see their entire race waste away. Now, this comet also affected the ogres in other ways. They were drawn to the impact site, although they knew it wasn't good for them. It was just sort of a nagging feeling in the back of their heads. And also, their stomachs never seemed full. The ogres were always a very kind of hungry, greedy people, but nothing like this before. They could never satiate their hunger anymore. It drove them to the edge of insanity. The comet seems to have changed the way they acted almost completely. But... Through sort of strength of will, they managed to continue to pack up and move to somewhere that they could actually eat and survive. Now, to make a bit of a long story short, I might get into the migration, the full trip the Ogres took in another video. But they eventually just get to a land, they settle down in what are probably now around the areas of the Mountains of Morn, if not a little bit further east than that. At this point, one of their number, an ogre by the name of Groff Onefinger, starts to, you know, have the idea, which a lot of the other ogres and the things had sort of been hearing, like, whispers about. It's kind of like an ongoing influence in their minds. And he had this idea to actually go back to see the crater, to see what was left, to just go and see if anything had done it, maybe investigate. He just heard a whisper in his mind, and he turned around from the Great Migration and started traveling back east with a party of ogres. When he eventually got to the crater, he made a discovery that has spread throughout Ogredom, and this is the story of what is in the crater that destroyed their homelands. And this is a thing known as the Great Moor. For he found a seemingly endless hole, vast in diameter, with a glistening throat and sharp teeth, leading into the seemingly infinite black void. There on the edge of this glistening, gulping hole, he and his ogres sat down and had a bit of a feast. They then returned to the general ogre population and told them of this new god who had destroyed their homeland 
but who many ogres in increasing amounts were hearing the whispers of in their minds or having a feeling of needing to go back there. Whether the Great Moor was just a coincidence or some kind of terrible creature called down from the heavens by the great dragon emperor himself, who knows? That has been perhaps lost to history, known only to the Emperor and perhaps some of his longer-lived offspring. This new creature, this new Moor, had become a god, a thing of worship within Ogre society, for they all heard its siren call in their minds. Groth himself, having spread the gospel of the Great Moor, as it were, became the first great prophet of the Moor and is thought to have kicked into being all the butchery rituals, all the slaughtering rituals for great feasts, for ritual eatings among the ogres, and really the worship of the Great Moor as an entirety led through these butchers and slaughtermasters. That brings us back to the year 2496, only some four years before the start of the Total War Warhammer timeline, and we join an ogre tribe led by the tyrant Brom Rock Grinder during one of his great feasts. Now, usual reveries occurring, there's your dust up, lots of drinking happening. Brom Slaughtermaster is an ogre by the name of Scrag. He's a very good slaughtermaster, makes lovely grub for all his ogre tribe, and Scrag is putting on this fantastic feast. Slaughtermasters in tribal society since the time of Groff Onefinger, the first prophet of the Great Moor, have always prepared foods in a sort of ritualistic manner to honour the Great Moor itself, acting both as sort of wizards and prophets of the Great Moor to a lesser degree than perhaps, you know, the great prophets do, but each of them are understood to have their own sort of link to the Great Moor. Whatever foresight Scrag might have had seems to have abandoned Scrag on this evening, as on this feast night, as his tyrant looked over the many morsels on offer, he found none other than his most trusted Noblar servant served up on a platter. Whether this was a genuine mistake from Scrag, or he was led by some sort of foretelling by the Great Moor itself, or perhaps a, just a grudge against the tyrant who he may have had a disagreement with. Who's to say, but Brom Rockgrinder's retribution was violent and instant. Scrag was ordered to be beaten by members of his own tribe and brought before the tyrant, who hacked off both his hands and ate them in front of Scrag, cheered on by the other drunken ogres. As final punishment, he ordered that Scrag's cauldron be attached to his back with chains and butcher hooks buried deep into his flesh. Scrag, then in pain and handless, was taken down to the cursed caverns of the ogre's mountain encampment. Banished, a huge boulder was rolled across the entrance, sealing him in, with his cauldron still hooked to his back and a bunch of his butchery tools cast down at his feet. In an extreme act of will, Scrag simply refused to die. He fumbled in the dark on the ground for his tools and then rammed the bloody stumps of his arms onto their handles, giving himself two chopping weapons where once his hands had been for he knew of the cursed creatures that live in these caverns, and these gorges would not be the death of him. Ogre society is a hard place, and they do not suffer weakness. So any ogres born with gangly limbs or without their signature paunch are usually given to the clan butcher, who would then leave them in the deepest cavern, near any campsite they were at at the time, sealing them in to die. Very few of these ill-begotten babies managed to survive, scrambling for sustenance in the dark and feeding on the base things that crawl in this dampness, whether it be rats, fanged leeches, crust worms, any of the scraps of carcasses that have perhaps been thrown into, into interconnecting tunnels. Using stealth and savagery born of rock-bottom desperation, they eke out an unwholesome existence. Sneaking their emaciated frames into narrow crevices to avoid predators, which include other gorges. They will simply gobble up 
even the most unnatural of things. Now, in these depths of the mountainous tunnels, these gorgers can encounter warpstone. Their unnatural diet can change them into filth-encrusted creatures that twist and grow into something horrible. Pure eating machines of taut muscle, claws, and ferocity. Distended jaws allow them to eat things much larger than them at times, and their teeth are replaced on a near daily basis. That Scrag's fate now seemed the same as so many of those he'd condemned to death seemed like a cruel end, but he would not go quietly, and he set off deeper into the caverns, the cauldron dragging behind him. As Scrag stumbled ever deeper into the dark labyrinth's pitch blackness, he began to hear noises, subtle at first, the odd rock moving a hundred yards ahead or fifty yards behind, more noises, vocalizations. He was being hunted now, he knew, and then out of the darkness, attracted by the smell of his blood, a horde of gorgers leapt out at him. Scrag knew this might be his end fate, but he would not go quietly, as he hacked and slashed at anything around him, ripping and cutting countless assailants down, until he came face to face with a grotesque hulking creature, a gorger the likes of which he'd never even heard of. The combat was fierce between the two as they tussled in the darkness. Scrag, feeling for anything he could get a hold of, lashed out with his own teeth and bit out the creature. Throat. The other gorgers seemingly paused for a moment, and after some time, as Scrag moved forward, they seemed to follow, but not violently, and he realized they identified him as some kind of new leader, having beaten their previous alpha. Scrag, driven on now by only vengeance and desperation, knew he could make use of these new allies, and so made his way upwards ever upwards to try and take his revenge on the tyrant that had sealed him down into this darkness. After some time, with a seemingly ever-growing group of gorgers gathering behind him, Scrag had found a way to the surface. He came out directly through the central pit in the ogre encampment known as the Moor Pit, his gorgers following swiftly after he set about the slaughter of every ogre in the tribe, unleashing the gorgers upon them. Brom Rockgrinder, the tyrant who had taken and eaten his hands, was pulled apart and boiled in Scrag's pot. All the corpses of the ogres were now part of his own great feast. All the offerings went to his god, the Great Moor, and as he offered up the tyrant's body itself, he could feel his wounds knit closed. He could feel himself receiving a surge of power, and he took this as a blessing from the Great Moor itself. Having emerged from a moor pit and taken his bloody revenge, Scrag is regarded with awe and fear. Many then began to see him as the living embodiment of the Great Moor, the next great prophet of their god. Having emerged through this, cent this central sort of religious symbol in his enemy's encampment, now, if he killed every ogre, we have to assume that Scrag's just telling people this story, but uh, who knows? Maybe there was one or two who got away. Having consumed his previous tyrant and achieved his revenge, Scrag is said to have had visions right after the incident that led him to the next battlefield, and then the next, and then the next. His band of gorgers are ever present with him, his guardians going wherever he goes. Now, whether they're just following his scent because he seems to guarantee them food wherever he goes, or whether it's just that they consider him as a magical sort of savior, their motivations are unclear, but they are always by his side. And so visions drive him forward to this day, from one battlefield to another, allowing him opportunities to fill his cauldron, rewarding him with tremendous power, making him unstoppable, surviving even the harshest of wounds. The power fades, however, when he gets less things to put in the pit and the battle seems to sort of teeter off, and so he gets another vision, and off he goes with his gorges. 
appearing on countless battlefields, helping out many ogre tribes, whether it be at the Battle of Bloody Rock, where Scrag's whirling blade sent chunks of elven flesh and bone flying in a red mist as he tore through their ranks like a saber tusk through a bag of noblars. Beers broke against his skin as though it was made of rock. The elven screams that day are burned into the memory of all who were there as their bodies were thrown into Scrag's boiling cauldron. Or the Battle of the Flayed Rock, where Scrag's spells turned the tide of battle against the Beastman hordes. Scrag himself roasted up many of the Minotaurs in the grand feast that followed. It seems when ogres see Scrag, they know the Great Moor is with them and they're guaranteed great food after the battle. And that's about it from Scrag. A wonderful, a strong, a fantastic, a fierce and vicious, a fierce and vicious fighter, a, a gifted magician and wizard, and you know what? A pretty darn decent chef, at least as far as ogre standards go as well. Now, in terms of his rules on the tabletop, he was, of course, a level four wizard with the lore of the moor, and he had frenzy, immune to poison. Killing Blow, and he calls Terror because, you know, he's a terrifying-looking guy. Now, he also had his Cauldron of the Great Moor, which came with its own set of rules. This was basically as many models as Scrag could kill. He would get bonuses to him or to the gorgers around him. The table started like this. If he killed one model or more, Scrag could get regen, and the gorgers who were perhaps who could be in reinforcement or somewhere else would come onto the battle without having to roll for it. If he killed five or more models, Scrag would get plus one attack, and all the gorgers on the table would get plus one attack as well. If he killed ten or more models, he would get hatred, and so would the gorgers. If he killed fifteen or more models, he would get unbreakable, and the gorgers on the table would get regen. So he really has always had this relationship where he boosts not only himself, but the gorgers around him as well. Well, that's about it for Scrag, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope to catch you all on the next one. Alright guys, bye.